leaving him with these people. I've watched them all day. They're the worst sort of... The only family he has. Pay them no mind. I believe in you. I, I just like the fact that in this book, Chiron is such a little dad to both of them of being like, I want to protect you. I want you to be, both of you to be safe. And you're absolutely very unsafe right now. And I don't approve of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's actually the leader that everyone wishes Dumbledore was. <laughs> yes, he does way more. Honestly, Chiron in the first book does more. Even the things that he does, there are definitely things he does that I don't like in later books. But I could even argue that him hiding the whole end part of the prophecy from Percy is him trying to do this general thing of like, you are right. And the way when he tells Percy that in the last book, he says like, you have so many things on your shoulders right now that you're carrying already. We didn't want to like burden you with something else. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing of like, I don't want to tell you so that you will kill yourself at the right time. And I'm just like, fattening you up for that in the way that Dumbledore does. He legitimately just doesn't want Percy to have to deal with any more than he already is. And I'm like, I can at least understand that because that's nice of you to try to do. <laughs> that's very nice of you to try to take something off of his plate when he has everything else. And he's one of the only people that actually even thinks about him like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in, in Harry's case, I guess is the implication there that if he would have known earlier, he would have been more reckless or would have killed himself? I'm, I'm I honestly don't know it. That whole thing with Dumbledore reminds me a lot of just like abusive dynamics, like the idea of like, I'm not even going to give you the chance to tell me no. Mm -hmm. Um, even though like, would, would Harry have said no? no probably not like but they don't even offer him the choice of deciding it's just this is just what he has to do and it's like this weird idea like imagining that a kid would like abandon everyone that he knows in this world just if you tell him and let him know what he's supposed to do longer than five minutes before he has to do it it's like i don't think that he would have been like i don't want to do this goodbye i'm gonna leave now <laughs> like, i can't imagine harry ever doing something like that at any point anyway and so i generally don't know besides just dumbledore being a control freak and wanting absolute control like if you're gonna compare dumbledore to anybody in like percy jackson i would compare him more to zeus than anyone else because zeus just wants total control of everyone yeah um and does whatever he wants like Dumbledore acts like he's nicer he puts on like a nice face and is able to do that in the way that Zeus doesn't feel like he has to and so he doesn't do it mm -hmm. um but it's very much the same thing of I just want total control of everything and if I don't and I don't have to tell this child that he has a horcrux on his forehead so why would I do that if I don't have to tell him I can just get away with not doing it yeah, well, I mean, I don't think, well, so, okay, so I'm just trying to follow the logic here because this made my brain go on a little rabbit hole. So um, the idea with Harry being a horror crook, because I know that J.K. Rowling's also hesitant to call him a proper horror crook. He's a mistaken semi-horror crook. Um, so with the idea being that he needs to die, in order to get rid of that piece of Voldemort's soul. Like, is there a danger of him knowing too soon, him thinking like, well, I'm gonna die, I guess this is fine. Um, sure, but I don't see Harry being that type of hero because Harry is the type who would be like, did we get all of the horror crooks as possible that I need to be here for? And uh, then going off and doing what he needs to do. Yeah, I don't think he would have left the horcruxes for everybody else out of the out of these two heroes like percy and Her and harry if there was one that was going to just kill themselves to make everyone's life easier it's percy mm -hmm. like not harry percy would have done that <laughs>
this is a bad idea. Stand up. I'm okay. If the roles were reversed in that way, where Percy had to die in order for everyone to be saved, he would have just done it as soon as he heard about it and just got everything over with. Um, Harry isn't quite like that for whatever reason. Um, that's not, he's not quite as self-sacrificing in that way because he's written by an asshole that doesn't know how to write abused characters. So he doesn't act like somebody who actually is, but, but Percy is. <laughs> So like that, yeah, if any woman was going to do that, like that, it would be Percy. <laughs> yeah, Percy's the first one to be like, everybody else could do this job better than me. And Harry's not. It's it's like a humility thing. Yeah, like it's kind of, I mean, to compare like the first quest they ever go on, mm -hmm. um, like the whole, the chess game and then the other that they cut out in the movies the um potion one i think like one friend gets taken out in the chess game the other friend gets taken out in the potion thing and then he is the one left at the end that would never happen in percy jackson mm -hmm. that would never never percy would start himself on fire before he would let both of his friends sacrifice themselves for his benefit. Instead, he flings himself off of the off of the arch. Do you hear me? Percy, you can't do this on your own. He's known and he's known Annabeth by that point for three days. Mm -hmm. at, at the most. Three days. And for the two weeks before that, she basically just stalked him and he thought that she was a bully. Mm -hmm. And besides that, anyway, when he, he realizes that she likes him, two days later, he flings himself off of a St. Louis arch to save her life. Like, that's, that's where his priorities are. <laughs> yeah. If he would, that never would have happened. And it, that's like those little, those little things with Harry Potter that I'm just like, yeah, I can tell who wrote this and that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and it bothers me that you don't because your main character deserved a lot better than he got, but I can't help that because you're the one who wrote him this way. <laughs> no! Scenes we have with Harry interacting with Draco where Harry's trying to be nice to him or he's trying to save him and stuff. I like the room of requirement one in the last book comes to mind where he saves him and Crab and Goyle from the flaming, you know, room of requirement. Like, theoretically, does it sound too horrible to let your worst enemy at school burn in, burn alive? Yes, theoretically. But we didn't establish an emotional relationship between Harry and Draco where Harry saving Draco makes sense. In, in this one, this is establishing something between Percy and Clarice where we see that he sees there's a different side to her and he doesn't even need to mention to it, it to her. He's just going to catalog it in his brain of, oh, this is why she's that way. Okay. I can understand that now. It's the thing too of like, they have the characterization set up already for Aries. Mm -hmm. And so having him be someone who would be willing, who would treat his kids like that is not surprising. He's already on the show, at least. I can't remember if he says this stuff in the books, but I'm pretty sure he does, where he says that he hates his own children mm -hmm. and that he hates the sum the winter solstice day because it's the only day of the year he has to actually see his children. He, like, he literally cannot stand the fact that his children exist. And so somebody like him treating their kids like that, that's just a rational sort of thing to expect almost from how they show his characterization. And even Clarice in the books, and definitely on the show, she has reasons to be mad at Percy, but they never treat her like Draco. Mm -hmm. Like, there's always a little bit of, like, humanity behind her. Like, the worst things about Clarice, at least the show version in the first season, is Luke lying about her. <laughs> That's the worst thing about her in season one, is that you think that she is working with, with Kronos, when she's not, she's not, she's not, she's not. She's just, when you take that away, it's like, okay, she just doesn't like Percy because he, because she feels threatened by him because of how good he is at beating the Minotaur the first time when he was a tiny little child. That's 
like whatever fine after that she's just like another person annoyed by him that he can deal with and it's much more like even mm-hmm. you know like even in these scenes he's like oh did nobody want to go on the quest with you yeah and it it's like the, it's very even like going back and forth at each other it's not like one person bullying the other one anymore um because now she is now we realize that she's not a horrible person luke is that she never actually was she was just angry at percy and you can understand why since aries is her stupid ass father <laughs> your life yeah. <laughs> um but yeah that that makes a huge difference for how you show her to show her as a human like of of like somebody who's not just like an angry stereotype of an angry british person that's mm-hmm. i don't even know like draco never even gets to the point really in the books where he even i'm not even sure that he even realizes like that he did anything wrong necessarily or anything by the end of the books it's really weird like people compare him sometimes to like zuko i don't even think he got that far (laughs) i don't think he even got that far if anything dudley comes closer because dudley (laughs) acknowledges and says I don't think your existence is bad, you know, like, uh, but Draco, I mean, I'm pretty sure the ending we get from him, everything after or before the prologue or epilogue, sorry, everything before the epilogue is just him and his family kind of weasel away from the last battle after his mom lies to Voldemort. I'm pretty sure that's it. Like, there's no thank you for saving my life. There's no, like, standing up for Harry at all. Of course not. Um, So, yeah, he got no sort of redemption. Clarice, I I get the feeling that going on this quest alone, even though she hasn't been on it that long at this point, has to be incredibly lonely. Like, literally, the only people she has to talk to are these undead Confederate soldiers who really are probably only interested in listening to her. And only interested in so much as they owe Ares a favor. Like, you know, that's that's it. And so there's no emotional stake there. And yeah. yeah. Clarice reminds me in in these, honestly, this book forward, it, because her dad is how he is, that I feel like she feels like she can't show any weakness and that she has to be like, I'm so big and bad look at how cool my ship is and look how undead all of my people are and my dad is the best and all that kind of stuff because she feels like that pressure to like not not like necessarily make him proud but like please him in some way like she's still trying to at this point which i can't blame her for wanting to try it especially because this is her first quest so this is her first chance to even try doing that. And she basically like lets that go after this book. I don't remember that ever being an issue after that, but that doesn't really say much because I don't remember a lot. So maybe it is, but I don't I don't think in any other books going forward, whatever is she just kind of is like, my dad is my dad and he kind of sucks, but I'm really good at fighting anyway. <laughs> um, but that's more what she's like. And so that's a lot easier to handle um, because she's not being overly mean or cruel or being a she's not actually being a bully Mm -hmm. like it's it's way more obvious to tell like where she's coming from and also at the same time she also is just like she's admitting the like holes almost in her story like when percy is like you know where is anyone else and teases her she's like we had to leave them at camp to protect camp and it's like so she's being like oh my dad is so cool because he thinks that I can do this, but it's like, actually, is he actually helping? Or like, would you rather be at camp right now? Like helping everybody and you're forced to go on this anyway, even though you don't want to be here. 